Welcome back. You're watching today here on ENCA, live from our Hyde Park studios here in Johannesburg. Now, nominations are officially open for the DA's top leadership positions in the upcoming federal Congress. Ousted Johannesburg Mayor and Paul Palatze has announced she will be contesting incumbent John Steenhazen for the party leader spot. At least nine positions are up for grabs in the Congress that is set to take place on the 1st and 2nd of April. Let's now speak to the party's chief electoral officer, Greg Crumbach. Thank you so much for your time, Greg. We do appreciate it. Uh, a lot of work ahead of you, considering that these positions have now officially opened up, and we're seeing that the former Johannesburg uh, mayor, Popa Latze, says she's going up against uh, John Steenhazen. That is probably going to be quite an interesting one, isn't it? It's always interesting, Marcel. Um, good afternoon to you and to your viewers. At the moment, we just have two candidates thus far that have indicated that they will be contesting. As you mentioned, that would be John Steenas and Mpo Palazze. But uh, Congresses in the DA are always interesting, and I, I don't think this one's going to be any different. <laughs> Speak to us about uh, the, the vetting process and the process that's going to unfold, given these positions that have opened up. Well, we, we open nominations on Monday night. Um, they will close on the 13th of March. The vetting process is relatively simple. Um, the candidates will fill in a form declaring that they agree to abide by the rules of conduct. Um, and they obviously have to be proposed and seconded by valid DA members. Um, and then, of course, um, there would be ongoing interaction with the candidates um, to make sure everything is understood, that the rules of conduct are understood and, and uh, implemented, and any other issues that might arise from time to time, for example, debates, uh, debate moderators, all those kind of things. Mm. Greg, maybe just speak to us about why the DA decides to go through this rigorous vetting process um, for its candidates. Well, we obviously um, would want to make sure that every single candidate that makes him or herself available for Congress is an upstanding individual that will bring credit to the party. And we do view our Congresses as a seminal moment in the history of our party because we know that after our Congresses, which are, in my opinion, very well run and um, project a vision of the, of the uh, future of our country in a way that's compelling to the voters that we get a big kicking support afterwards. Viewers um, and voters like to see the way we do things. We don't throw chairs around at our Congress. Our Congresses are never disputed. The winners and losers um, equally welcome the result. Um, even if you're unsuccessful, we haven't had a challenge to Congress for 20 years. And therefore, we have a vetting process to make sure that the kind of candidates that will make themselves available are aware of the rules and agree to abide to the rules so that that best part of the DA, which is where we conduct our internal elections, is clearly conveyed to the voting public at large and they can be proud of what they see and um, compare other parties' way of doing Congresses to ours, which I think is a very favorable comparison in, in the sense of our party, the Democratic Alliance. Mm. Greg, just correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, there is some kind of understanding that interested parties will have to submit a certificate of good financial standing. Why is that the case? Why do you seek that from interested parties? Well, the certificate of good financial standing relates to the statutory obligations that all our public groups have. We have um, what is known as a tithe, but it's not 10%. And, um, Every single month, um, you are required to pay a certain amount of money over to the party as your way of assisting the party going forward. And um, we don't allow anyone who is not up to date with those statutory obligations to stand as a candidate. So the certificate of good financial standing will emanate on behalf of a candidate from their region or their province. And that regional province will confirm they are totally up to date with their obligations financially to the party. And in that way, we have people of good financial standing who make themselves available for leadership. What happens to candidates that want to uh, get sponsorships or uh, raise funds? Is that allowed? Yes, it is allowed. Um, the only stipulation that we have is that you may not approach existing donors to the party because part of our rules of conduct is that you need to fund your own campaigns 
and you may not use party resources, which would then obviously include donors. And so what you would do is if you wanted to approach people to assist you in your campaign, you would submit a list of those proposed donors to the party. We would check that against our existing donor database, and we would advise the candidate whether or not they are existing donors. And anyone who's not an existing donor can be freely approached, and in that way our candidates um, can then fund their own campaigns. Mm. Maybe just speak to us. I do know that uh, this is set to t Congress is set to take place uh, around a April, the first week of April. Um, so uh, those who want to contest and want to partake uh, obviously have about a month or so to still go. So um, first and second of April, and that's quite a lot of time. Um, we'll have nearly two thousand three hundred delegates. We will make a full delegates voters role available to every candidate and that will give them the best part of a month or perhaps a bit more to actually campaign. So there is there is a bit of a time period for them to do that. They already know, of course, who all the MPs and MPLs and many of the councils are that will be Congress delegates. But now the nominations are open as of Monday. All the candidates um, will be selling their vision to the various Congress delegates and offering um, their plan to take the DA forward and to success in 2024. Okay, thank you so much for your time. We'll just have to wait and see how all of that uh, unfolds. Thank you for your time this afternoon. That's DA's Chief Electoral Officer, Greg Crumbach.